This is this is this is. Just recently, they were asking me these questions. Oh, what was it? List three people you know in your social networks. I'm like, why? Why? That's super creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Love your background. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's just, awesome. This is the studio. We're at the studio here. So. Yeah, just the, I love the, the rabbit and the, and the headdress. Cool. Gosh. So where are you at? So I am in Pelham, New Hampshire right now in a small cabin. It's basically right next to Lowell, Massachusetts. And uh, it's kind of interesting. My great-grandfather bought a 55-cent pound of coffee, and they were advertising mm. the coffee. And if you bought it, at this time, you got a plot of land. And what? so I know. And that's so crazy. They call it the, the, the what do they call it? The, uh, the coffee lots. That's amazing. And so my grandfather, uh, my great grandfather, grandfather built this cabin from in, and my wife and I fixed it up to be actual, actually livable. <laughs> that's nice. I love that. <laughs> Very cool. Keeping it in the family. Yeah, surviving. Well, we could talk about a lot. I know you guys got a new record coming out, Big D and the Kid Kids Table. Um, do your art. We'll talk all about that. I want to hear all about it. Uh, yeah. I kind of want to hear. I was inspired, by the way, watching your your social media. You guys had some some art submissions, and there was some yeah. some stencils happening, and it, just colorful, insane. And we'll get into the album in a little bit, but I sure. just that to me was just like. They, I can feel something happening with this new album. It's been almost 10 years, nine years since you guys put out a record or? No, yeah. It's been insane. So that was inspiring to me, just seeing like, okay, there's there's some hype with this, this these new songs. I, I checked out the new videos. Better Day sounds great. Uh, what was the, uh, no, uh, what was the other one called? Too Much. Too Much, yeah, it's so hooky too much like it's got your personality all over it um but before we get into the record i mean what have you guys you know what have you been up to what led up to let's do a record like what happened anything happened well, well like, yeah well when we did the last record the stomp and stroll a long time ago the the first thing on our mind was to do a record for our backup singers the doped up dollies because you know i said to saray saray aaron and brie and I said to them, you know, one day we'll be your band and we'll back you up for a record. And then like seven years went by and Saray was like, so uh, when's this happening? And I was like, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so so it, it, the Dolly's record went straight to the forefront of uh, what we wanted you know, to, to do next musically. So we put out their record. And then right after that, I married one of the Dolly's and we had two children. So we, we just had to kind of regroup, have kids um i did my first solo not solo project but like like side band side project uh called cuidado um and that was a really fun project and so then then after cuidado we just went someone said something to us like you know big d hasn't put out a record of original material in like eight or nine years and i didn't know that and I was like, holy crap, we got to write a record like now. And so <laughs> it was really just somebody telling me how much time went by, which I really, I really, if you had asked me, I would have said three years had gone by. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like nine. Insane. So it was, we were still active in, in writing music and touring and doing, we did our record. And it just slipped our mind. I don't know. just yeah. The years fly by, the, you know, the, the more you get into life, the years fly by. But I want to back up a little bit to you getting married. Mm. What I mean, so this is a little, di a little different. You married so, kind of a band member, although backup dancer. What was that well, like? I mean, yeah. you can be well, as tight-lipped as you want to be, but I I'd love to hear some some thoughts on, like, how that happened and and – and you guys are like, well, I guess I don't hate you on tour, so we're going to get along if we're married, right? Like, is that <laughs> right, right. what was the dynamic like? Well, she was the love interest in our music video, We Can Live Anywhere. And people basically say it as like, right when we met each other, like right when two people who don't know each other met each other, we just didn't, we just like two penguins just walking next to each other. Like we, we, we met each other and then we just didn't separate. Um, 
But I was trying to be very professional, like you were saying. I was like, Eo, even if I think Brie is Brienne is awesome, I can be her friend and think she's awesome and just be like, wow, she's she's gonna make some guy so happy. What a what an amazing woman. But it wasn't until people started like giving me the elbow, like the other dollies and big D guys, like, so you and Brie? And and I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, not just because I choose to talk like Cause at first it was like my, my one of my best friends in the band is Ryan. It's like, so I talk to her just as much as I talk to Ryan and she's female. There's nothing there. But they were like, come on, come on. Like they were like, you're basically, I didn't know I was allowed to like her. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. And when the, the band said, you, you, you're allowed to like her. I went, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess I like her. <laughs> yeah. Cause I kept feeling like she's going to make some guy psyched. And then I, it was me. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad she felt the same way. Obviously she did, but it's, it's, it's crazy. That's amazing. And, and, and it seemed to work out pretty cool. Yeah. And it's funny watching the video now. Cause now if you watch the video, like all, that's the first time we like pretty much talked ever mm -hmm. is, was that video and we're laughing and stuff. And like, it looks really natural. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. We, but we were really nervous. I bet. I bet. That's cool. Well, amazing. So new record, uh, new wife, new, well, not new anymore. Right. <laughs> <It's been a laughs> but, uh, since the last time I think I saw you, you were probably married by the time since I last saw you. It wasn't Chicago? that. Was it yeah. Chicago? Was it Chicago? That's right. Goldfinger show. Goldfinger suicide machines, which was awesome. That was such a great night. Amazing um, night. yeah, I was, I was, I was probably married maybe without kids. Like you said, the years go by so fast. I, I just can't keep up. I know. Insane. Insane. So, so you're like, okay, maybe, maybe it's time to do It's time to do a record, but was it time for everybody else? Was everybody, was it hard to get the band back together? Like pull them away from personal projects? Yeah, that's a good point. Like it's, when you're young and you all like live on the same block and hanging out at the same house every night anyway, it's pretty easy to write a record because you just kind of like want to go in the basement. You're like, yeah, of course, there's nothing to, you know, so you just you just do it. Yeah. But yeah, you have to sometimes, you know, when you get older, do the bat signal. Um, and, you know, like it's time to do it. And everyone was super psyched. But scheduling is is harder. But that's why I got to say, the other than all the the tough things that happened with the lockdown other you know recognizing the lockdown kind of helped the big d record because we all just started like hanging out on zooms and stuff and just just hanging out like it was like it was we were all living as roommates again do you know what i mean yeah. just shooting the shit talking about music getting to music or not getting to music um just a bunch of, it was it's just one of those friday nights where a bunch of music kids are staying at someone's house and it really helped our record just just by talking a lot and hanging out a lot. Contrary to that whole like we practice on Thursdays from seven to nine after work when we're really you know that most bands are like they have a schedule yeah. and it's after work and they're already tired. You know, I, I we we try not to do that anymore. You know, like after driving through traffic and looking for parking, let's be creative. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we try to make it fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a lot of people are going to be listening to this going, yeah, I know it's hard. I try to do things after work. I feel like going straight to sleep. And you're like, you have to be creative and have fun. All right, have fun now. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it's like, be creative now. Like, <laughs> yes. Now? <laughs> right now. I mean, that's, I have such a, I'm so lucky because I have, you know, just, I do MXPX and everything that sort of stems around MXPX. And, when I don't write a good lyric, I'm trying to write some lyrics the other day and I'm just like, I got like four lines and I can't think of anything else, literally. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put that away and go do something else and I'll come back to it later. And I'll probably yeah. not come back. I'll probably come back to some new thing later. But that's a huge thing, being creative when, you, when you're inspired to be creative, you know, not the scheduling so more about the yeah. Zoom stuff. Uh, I know you're, you're a fan of Zoom. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's actually, like, whose idea was that? Because that's something that I would not personally think to do. It was, it was because, like, it was interesting because we wrote half the, half the record was starting to get recorded, like drums, guitar, bass, and organ. And then we went on tour with Real Big Fish and Keep Flying. 
And just like the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie, the first one with Johnny Depp, like when he walks off the boat and the right when he stands on the dock, it sinks. Like yeah. <laughs> our tour ended on Sunday and Monday was the lockdown. You know whoa. what I mean? So we were like, whoa, whoa. But we had these horn studio sessions that had to get canceled. And so that's what started the Zoom calls. Like, yo, you got, what do you want to do? You know, like, I guess we're not doing that. Like, so because of lockdown happening immediately after tour, we still wanted to see each other. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, like I said, it was, it was, it was very seventh grade. It was very like, you guys want to have a big sleepover on Friday? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Talk about music. And so it was, it was, it was handy. It was yeah. nice to turn the world off. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like have a second to catch up with friends and projects. And that's the thing is like, if you, you can really have a social circle online, it's not necessarily the same, but you get just by talking to a friend, you get some sort of mental, I don't know what it is, a release, something oh. it's very maybe subconscious to a lot of people, but you feel better, even if you don't realize you feel better. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I hear it in the record, like going going through listening to the songs, man, you guys have so much energy and it sounds like you're having so much fun and you're like, let's try this. Let's go here. Let's do this. But it, it's great. I love it. And, and uh, congratulations. I mean, you guys have a, a, a great group of songs coming out. Your fans are going to be so excited. So, so into it. So uh, I, I'm just I predicting I think if you're a Big D fan, and this is this is bold, it, if you're a Big D fan, this might be your favorite Big D record. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes. It, and that's yes. hard to say because you know people love records that remind them of certain times in their life. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I don't know. I think I think if you <laughs> like the group from the start to the last record, this could be your new favorite record. And it's like you said, it's this. It's we wanted to make sure we I, I I'm sure you do this as well. Like sometimes you think about the songs to go on tour with and you're like, I want to have a blast on tour. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So like the energy you were talking about is like, I want that. I want to make sure that we go on tour. It's just a, a ruckus. And so, you know, but it was it's fun. And we had a lot of good times um, writing songs that weren't conventional, meaning like the magnetic fields showed me this. They'll have a song that's just like verse, 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 chorus, or verse, chorus, mm. chorus, 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 chorus. And I didn't know you could do that at one point. You know right, what I mean? Right. And so then finally we just kind of exercised that. Like we don't need a bridge. <laughs> right. I, it's it's important to realize as a songwriter because I I get stuck as a songwriter too sometimes. Just try. It's not. It's it's one thing to like have a bunch of parts. Like this part's great. This part's great. But like. Where do you do it and how many times do you bring it back? That's a, I mean, that can make or break a song, really. It could be like, that was a good song, but it's, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. But like, that's really important. I, I, I'd love to delve into more of the verse, 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 chorus end kind of wow. stuff because you guys have, you got some cool intros, weird sampling stuff. It sounds yeah. like you, you do you rehearse with, uh, a delay on your vocal where you can hit it on and off like a pedal or something I, you can tweak yeah, with? Yeah, I do that space echo pedal. Live, I, that's I, fun. Yeah, I was using just a regular um, delay pedal like a long time ago and then I saw Bedouin Sound Clash actually use the space echo and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Makes all the difference. That's the way to go. But I, you know, I, I, I wanna go back to like what you were saying about the lyrics because you might, you might dig this. I don't remember who I heard this from but it's all, you know, you said you did four lines and then you wanted to back away. Yeah. You know, like I heard this once, which is kind of neat and it's very it, neat and vague. Um, so there was this author, I guess, that put out her first book was a bestseller. And somebody asked her a question after like, so how does it feel that you put out a bestseller as your first book and n no book a after that is ever going to be as big? Right. It's a pretty rough, rough <laughs> right. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she, so she started to research, panic and research, and something to the effect of she said that the, remember, uh, paraphrasing or that the word genius came from like, like a, they wanted to put someone in between an artist and their creativity, um, so the artist never blamed themselves for for not being creative. Mm. So they said like when you're creative, the the gene the genius is visiting you, and helping you along. But if you're not being creative, then it's it's okay because the genius is 
is visiting someone else. And that's awesome that that, that other person um, gets to be visited. And so you just have to kind of figure out is so you can have someone in between so you don't beat yourself up like yeah. oh i can't do it right now you know because <laughs> <laughs> because someone else someone else's fault <laughs> that's like the song fairy yeah like the song fairy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's like the tooth fairy song fairy. yeah yeah it's like yeah. having a muse i mean yeah that, that all those things whatever it is because i i feel that uh, there's I've recorded myself writing a song, which is very weird to do too. Like you have mm. to like record long enough, like on video, long enough to where you forget that you're on video. But I've actually, it was on our last record I recorded um, when I wrote the song Uptown Streets. And it's a, kind of a rock and roll song. And um, and I feel like it was the chorus I came up with. But, but at the same time, like when I'm writing that stuff, I'm not thinking I'm going to write a song called Uptown Streets and it's going to go like this and I'm going to probably have a dash of, uh, you know, backup vocal on this part. You know, like I'm not yeah. thinking that at all. Like I'm thinking I'm literally just trying to like let my mind wander. Like when you write when you're writing stream of consciousness back in school, yep. that's literally how I write songs for the most part. I mean, I mean, I can come up with like a line. I'm like, OK, I want to write a line about this and I can do that. But. I generally don't do that. I generally just let it come out. The song fairy, you know? Yeah, it, it really is interesting. It's like, because it's like, sometimes when you write a record, and let's say you keep 12, but you might have written 40. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, you're like which, which ones, you know, I don't want to use the word survive because that's <laughs> not incorrect because the other ones can survive sure. later. You yeah. know what I mean? But I guess make the team, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it is so interesting. Like it's you just have this group of songs and you work on each one and then slowly some of them make the album. And I remember talking with Joe Gittleman of the Boston's once and he said one of the best. He says everything. Everything he says is the best. But <laughs> he said one of his best things. And he's like, he's like, you never need to be worried that your song didn't make a record because it'll make the next record. And if it doesn't doesn't make the next record then it shouldn't have made either record do you know what i mean like yes. if it's not good enough ever you know what i mean like absolutely a good, a good song will find a way yep and yeah. sometimes you have a good song that's just not your band like this is a good song oh. somehow i wrote it but it just does not fit quite right that was my cuidado project like um big d had written this song a single our only single called oi dj and it's 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 I really love, you know, like 50s arrangements and, you know, classic blues rock. And so it was one of those ones. We had an awesome guest guest singer, Maddie Ruthless from the Far East and everything, the Dollies. But so I thought our next record was going to be like a whole bunch of those songs, Noise Complaints and Oi DJs. Mm. And then some of the guys in the band were like, well, we miss you screaming. Can you can you get back to doing some screaming? And I was like, oh, hell yes. So then I wrote all these scream songs and they were all like, whoa, 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 whoa. And that became Cuidado. I was like, oh, sorry. Too much. Sorry. <laughs> too much? Maybe. Yeah, it was too much. So. Oh, well, the story of your life. <laughs> yeah. no, no. So. It, was, it was pretty funny. Because I, I remember being so proud and being like, here's a bunch of screaming. And they're like, that's, that's, that's pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, that's the thing is like, once you, it, it's almost like as a songwriter, you you once you kind of like figure out a style of song, then you can keep writing that style of song. But you may have yeah. never written it before, but once you figure it out, then it's like so much easier to just continue doing that. Like I remember when I, it was around 1999, I started writing Hank Williams style country tunes, like real basic, real kind of how I started writing punk songs was like two chord songs and stuff like that. But But it's just like once I figured out, oh, this seventh really sounds good. That's like a, a traditional Americana thing or whatever, but yeah. you know, I was just always learning myself as I would listen to other artists and, and go, I'm going to figure out that chord. Uh, there's so many, so many times I would write a song based on a new chord that I figured out like a Beatles song. I would figure out like some seventh or a ninth. And then I'd try to add that into an MXPX song or something like that. A good example would be like uh, one of our songs called begin to start. It's very jazzy at the beginning and, yeah. and then it gets fast, but it's like all these chords that I did not know how to play before I yeah. wrote that song. Well, it's interesting to hear you say that because, you know, I know MXPX, of course, but like to hear those references you just said, like sometimes I always tell people like the, the, the songs that are going to really 
get your creative juices going and inspire you are probably not going to be at all in the genre of the music that you play. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Like, cause you kind of have a hold, a little bit of a hold on the genre that you play. But then when you go outside and listen to polar opposites, you're like, what if I did that? Like if I did something like that, then that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it would come out so different, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is what makes everybody kind of unique and sound like themselves is, they're inspired by art, uh, artists that have already done it, but then they're just taking it to a different genre, a different vibe, different players, everything. It all it all mashes together in cool ways. And that's why I like festivals too, because like sometimes with festivals, it's really funny because you'll have like bands and totally different styles all hanging out and having a good time together. And and like if if the listeners, if the fans could see it, sometimes they'd be like, wait, no, the. August Burns Red can't hang out with MXPX that because my identity is having trouble. And you're like, dude, everybody likes everybody. It yeah. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> it's a trip. It is a trip. I love it. You know, another thing that you reminded me of when you said festivals is the fact that punk rock is such a small camp of people and musicians yeah. and, and, you know, and workers and everybody that's touring around. And, and even the audience is small compared to just how big pop music is or, or yeah. hip hop or even country music. It's just so big. And you're like, okay, all right. We kind of do have a handle on, on the punk rock scene. It's like, this mm -hmm. is it. It's our, our, it's our little ghetto, but we love it. <laughs> it's, it's so true though. And I didn't realize that until I started seeing like, Oh, the guitar tech for rancid is now guitar teching for da 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 is now tour managing. Like, and you're like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, we are a small group. Mm -hmm. Like, and it, it's it's kind of beautiful like that way. You know, yeah. you know, like a nice picnic of a. We're the underground. Rock. I mean, the underground's obviously changed over the years, but it's still punk rock is still in the underground, or it's gone back in over the years. But yeah, subculture. Subculture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and subculture is. I don't. Even, I probably shouldn't even talk about subculture. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. I'm, it's been so many years, but but since we've had the internet, things have changed so much. Uh, the yeah. way we get our music, the way we discover things. I mean, you know, going back, you know, cassette tapes have come back, but they're not really back. They're they're back always. When something comes back, it's like such a small niche, niche, oh, yeah. or whatever, like a subculture, like you're saying, of something. So it's so hard to go big and go mainstream these days. Even yeah, well, even people that are huge say. aren't that big compared to like the worst selling artists of 20 years ago. Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, they used to describe it as, like, big fish, small pond. Remember mm -hmm. that whole thing? Yeah. Like, I mean, it goes for many different examples. But in the music industry, it's almost like that's just the way it's going to be. It's like they say it's just going to be tribes, just different tribes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that band is big in that tribe and that, you know what I mean, in, in that group. So I, I think that's that's kind of awesome. I mean, it is – it's so weird because it's – because they say there won't be another Elvis, there won't be another Michael Jackson, there won't be another Britney Spears. Because they, I think they take it to Britney Spears, and and then, then that's it. Like meaning that was the end of just the super icon. Yeah, you can still be super super famous, but those people seem to pave the way for other icons to know what not to do that whole thing. You know what I mean? Like because you know, and I remember back in the eighties when Michael Jackson's video. To, went was on TV. It was like after the six o'clock news. Do you know what I mean? Right. It was just like on TV. <laughs> right. Everyone <laughs> saw it. Yeah. It was on one of the three channels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so nowadays Taylor Swift is huge, but at the same time, if you look at the numbers, it's just it's impossible to get there because we have so many fragmented ways to get our media, to get all our music, our our movies, our TV shows. I mean, you know, you probably like, oh, I really wanted to watch this show, but I have no idea what channel it's on. And you're like, how do I find it? Like yeah. you go to Netflix. It's yeah. not on Netflix. Well, I guess, uh, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a weird world. Yeah. But <laughs> but probably the younger generation is like, that's how it's always been. Of course, it's <laughs> I still I still um, I still think it's a trip that I can watch Indiana Jones or Star Wars whenever I want to, because, you know, back in the day that was you'd have to go to the theater or rent it on a video you know a vcr tape but like i just still think it's a trip like the power 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could play it any time. <laughs> it's like being an adult, too. Like, to me, I thought of this. So I've, I think of this all the time still. I'll be like, I'm an adult. I have... There's nothing that I can't do, right? I could just go do whatever. And I'm like, well, okay, this. Like, my wife would probably get mad if I did this. And then, well, I have kids, so I probably shouldn't do this. Uh, you know, just, I'd probably get arrested if I did that. So you're like, okay, but overall, I guess I'm pr proving myself wrong. But my point is, is we have the option to really be really weird and do weird shit all the time. And like, let's go down to the, the weird store and look at porn or whatever. But like, it's all on online now. It's all on the internet. But, um, yeah. but we don't do that because it's like the options are limitless. So you just do yeah. whatever is comfortable and you do what you kind of what's in front of you. You're like, Oh, I want to do that. And I'm going to go do that. But you could, you could do a million things is what I'm saying, but you just don't, there's too many options. There's too much. You could watch all these TV shows, but there's just not oh, time yeah. to do it. That's yeah. I, maybe that should have been my conclusion is sure. I could do all these things as an adult, all these nefarious and some, some good, but uh, I just don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have energy. I don't have the, the idea to do it all. I also believe in like, sometimes you hear things like, you know, is the album dead? You know, you hear you know, it's just singles. Right. I, I, I just bring that up because like, I just don't think the album is dead. Like I think singles are popular, but if you think about like the fifties singles were popular, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I, so as far as music goes, like even though all, even though everyone can put their music online, and, and which is crazy, the fact that you can get worldwide distribution and just click, um, I still think the album and having a cohesive, fun journey is still alive. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I feel like you, you create like a mini story with a single, but you can only really put so much hype behind a single, right? I mean, it's, it's one song, it's like, okay, Everybody listening to it? Cool. Like a month later, you're like, you still listen to the song? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. there's always so much you could do, right? And then with an album, it's just more, it's the same, but it's bigger. It's it's a bunch of songs. It's a bigger story. It's just more. So I think there's more on the on the, on the the bone for, for listeners and for fans of your band, any band that, you know, that yeah. puts out a record. But and it's hard, like, as an artist to get all of who you, you know, like a, one song can't i mean it, maybe it can but it's we have so much we want to say and so much we want to sh provide and all these things that like yeah i almost look for me albums are a song like that's your song yeah you know what I mean? um you know i mean like some of my favorite records like let's just let's just take one out of nowhere like let's say master of puppets from metallica like you got to listen to the whole record. <laughs> you know, like you, just, you, just, you got to jump in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you could listen to one song, but I don't know. It's, you know what it is? It's like, it's like having one sit down with a friend and, and, and then having 12 sit downs with a friend. You know what I mean? Like you, you're going to get to know that friend a lot more after 12. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So yeah, I, I, I believe in the record. And then for, for our new one, like I, I, I definitely had fun trying to make a record, a journey. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about it then. Uh, do your art. What was mm. what was the title? Where did it come from? Well, do your art. Well, there's a couple things. Like, like, first of all, I can't illustrate or paint at all. But obviously, I have friends that are like have X Men mutant powers, and they can just literally draw anything and it looks lifelike you know what i mean but after a while being being a touring musician you know, you know that you're, you're a little off the grid and you can you can take the time to kind of like watch society uh while not fully being a part of it and not just one society but america the uk you know europe you can watch all these different societies um and i just I just started getting a little bummed out that so many of my talented friends have it be painters, guitar players, drummers, singers. They start they, they would start to hang up their hats, you know, and, and these people are just so talented because the culture and society of our of America right now doesn't really value the artist, even though every individual uh like projects themselves with the music they listen to. It's very important to every single individual, like that people know what kind of music they listen to. At the same time, they don't value the artist. 
So I was just, you know, just saying, just kind of transcending, like, don't stop. Like, you have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing this gift that you were born with, even if current society and, and, and you can't even get to it because your job and commute and making dinner. And I just wanted, I just wanted people to not hang up their hats. Do you know what I mean? Like, just keep doing it. It's because because I can't do so many of the things that I see people do. You know, like I can't play bass like you at all. And like, what if you stopped? Do you know what I mean? It'd be like, <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's right. It's it's just things like that. Being okay. appreciating people and then seeing them be frustrated and and at the same time, like, you know, there's not to get. I'm not trying to get too too deep, but like, there is class warfare in every profession. Where, you know, if some people who are who are doing well in the music industry and like the film industry, they might have like parents who work for Sony or things like that. So people just need to know that if they're getting frustrated, it's not because they're not good enough. That's the thing. Like, I don't want people to think, oh, I wasn't good enough. I tried really hard, but I because, you know, the decks stacked. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, which is which is okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the way it is. So it was just, it's just basically a thing to, to say to artists, like, you know, it, it, it's tough out there, but y you do have a, a really beautiful talent, you know? And, and, and one last thing about it, it's just like a little joke. And that's like, if you take it to comic books, it's like, okay, so Batman was rich. So he gets all the different things, you know, he, he can afford any sort of doohickey. Superman um, is number one. He's the number one superhero, you know, but he he's only has powers because he moved. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, he's moved. <laughs> so what if all our other favorite characters like Havoc and Gambit and Wolverine and Deadpool, what if they all were like, you know, I don't know, Batman and Superman are that they, they got it. I'm just I'm just going to go get a job. We'd all be like, no, you're important. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> we need you to fight crime. We, we want to read your stories. And so it's. It's just observing artists feeling they're not good enough and giving up and me trying to tell them that's not right. Yeah. You know? No, I love that. It's a great, a great message, a good theme to it. And, you know, and, and no matter, I mean, just life has a way of just shuffling people through, you know, and you just gotta, you just gotta find what you love and, and do it because yeah. that's it. That's yeah. It. I, I don't know what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing music, honestly, like, Coding? Probably not. I, <laughs> oh, I, I always, I always kind of, one of the, one of the biggest things that I realized in the, with how hard I have to like, if you will fight, fight for your life in art and music was, yeah. I was waiting tables mm -hmm. and you know, when people don't come into the restaurant, you have to like act busy or something. So Bob, my manager was like, Dave, clean the printers. And, and what, what it was is you take two, uh, what are they called? Q-tips mm -hmm. and clean out the printers of like hair. And I remember cleaning out like three printers and feeling like really proud of it. Like I did a really great job and Bob would notice and you know, Dave, you're a really good worker. And then right when I had that thought, I was like, holy shit, he doesn't care. Why do I feel pride? Cause I clean these meaning like I have to put that kind of effort towards myself, you yeah. know, like towards my songwriting, towards my, you know, getting merch together, getting the tours together. I can't think that this guy is going to be proud of me for, you know, it's, it's just. Sure. A, but at the same time, it just shows who, what kind of person you are that you're just, no matter what you're doing, you're going to, okay, I'm going to do this. This needs to be done. I'm going to do this. Yeah, that's and true. a lot of people would just be like, I ain't touching that shit. You know, like, no, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> the, so, uh, you know, yeah, that's true. I mean, the fact that you have this, how many songs on the new record? So there's 20 tracks <laughs> and they're not all necessarily. Songs. There's some skits in there and like sounds yeah, and like stuff. Once I heard, once I heard some people like on spot, like, you know, Spotify, like pays you this, like, you know, once I realized that a tracks, a track, you know what I mean? Like you could just have a track be you snoring and it would still get you the point zeros. It's it wasn't because wow. of royalties. It was just yeah. going like, wait a minute. It does. You, you don't even need to have a song. It just is tracks. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I have this joke that I'm going to make this 
Spotify channel called Distant Construction, and it's just sounds of <laughs> construction in the distance. Yeah. And it gets the same royalty rate as like a Queen song. Absolutely. You could totally do that. <laughs> I always think about doing that for, for like a sleep album or something because I, I listen to sleep music sometimes, not all the time. Yeah. But sometimes I'll listen to ambient music. It's like something you would hear like when you're getting a massage or like in yoga. But like no melody, like no repeating rhythms or melodies. It's just really just basic and, and oh, yeah. well, not even basic, I would say. It's probably not basic, to be honest, probably very layered. And, and I'm just thinking to myself, like this guy, whoever person is making so much money, probably a hedge fund, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the people, all the, all the, the rain, the rain people, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, but, but you know, it's also, it's also one of these things in you're a songwriter, like, like how at this point in my career, I was like, how many 10 or 12, three minute songs can people take? Like, th like meaning getting away from the three minute, like, I don't, I don't know, like being trapped inside the intro verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, solo, chorus, chorus, like how many of those can one do? And so we did a, we did a good amount of them. You know, we did like, I'm not sure, but something like seven or so. And then we had fun with the other tracks. You know <laughs> I what love like, that. Yeah, no, like, you can do whatever you want, especially nowadays. There's no rules. You're, you're kind of, I mean, you're with Side One Dummy, but being the more out there, the more artistic, the more you try things, I think the better. Yeah. 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 And the fact and that the you have really solid tracks as well, <laughs> solid ideas, yeah. solid choruses and, and verses and, so it's not just a bunch of weirdness. It's right, right. But the Boston's what was one of their singles was something like eleven minutes or eight minutes. I was like, yeah, man, all right. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's a rough. That's a rough length for you know. But but it's it's do it. Why not? Who cares? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, we, need, we need people changing things up. Yeah. Because you know? if you do that, then you can go back to like a three minute song and it's fine or whatever. Yeah. So far, pretty much written a bunch of three minute songs lately, but. <laughs> No, no, I know, what you, I know, what you, but it's it's because you know three is almost like it, it when you're young, it's hard to it's too get long, to three. but now it's like you're struggling to get it under three. Yeah, at least I am a lot of times. When you first start writing music, everything's five minutes. Your intro is like a like when you first start writing songs, like your intro is a minute. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's keep doing that. I really like that. Let's keep doing that. That's what we did on yeah. our first album. It's like so so many of the songs could have been cut in half. But we're like, all right, yeah. songs should be done. And then we like literally play the whole, like a whole nother section of every part. You're like, okay, it's that's too like much. It's always like drums, 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 drums. Now the bass. bass, bass, <laughs> bass, bass. Now the <laughs> Aaron Sprinkle produced that. And it was his first like real production, I think. He did not know to tell, tell us to like cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. Well, and we we'll, didn't know. We'll write, a song. So we'll, we'll, write, we'll write a song that's really long. And have a really long intro and then just cut it off once the song's done. Right, 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 right. That, you know, you write it to get the vibes going and then you start making cuts and you cut out the fat and you make it streamlined just so you like. If I was a listener that had literally three, four, five minutes on my way to work, can I listen to this song and will I listen to it again? Like, that's not necessarily yeah. what I'm thinking about when I'm writing it, but when we're when we're in the recording process and we're, we're sort of like making edits that way, that's... That's something I think about. Like, is somebody going to just be bored with this, or am I? Yeah. Do I think I'm great? <laughs> you know? Yeah. How do well, you know exactly when you got a good song? Well, well, it's what's kind of like what you're saying with the too many movies and stuff. Like, if there's too much content, then then people have more of a choice to go. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for me, a good song. Geez, it's it's that's such a good question because it's like. I think, oh my God, I'm going to say the most cliche answer. I just feel it. <laughs> yeah, of but, course. <laughs> but, but it's like. Does it get stuck in your head? Do you, do you find yourself singing it? fireworks that, was that? I was going to say, do you, do you, does it get stuck in your head? Do you hear it over? Do you, are you bound, are you dancing I think I to just, it? I think I can't stop talking and thinking about it. Like um, the Dope Dope Dollies, we're, we're in the middle of recording a new single. It's called na 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 n a n a n a n a, and I can't stop thinking about it. And I can't, and it and it give, it brings me to a happy place. Meaning, like the world can be crap and things can be going on. But then I'll take a moment and think of that song, and like it, 
I just I just go to it. You just, yeah. It's like a mat. It's you just magnetized to it. That's how you know it's good. You know, magnetized. That's yeah. Whatever it is for you, whether it's singing along, thinking about it, dancing, moving when you're like when you put on, on the demo or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. how I know. Honestly, I think it's the same. But yeah, you know, you got a good song with this non on na song, but it's not done yet, right? So you still have the chance that you might screw it up. <laughs> 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 so, so yes, that's so. That is so. What's going through my head right now? I'm like, love it. Don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause you can. Yeah, you, you can. can mess the song up. Have you ever? Do you feel like you've done? You don't have to name the song, but you feel like, man, I messed that one up. I think there was there was a song or two where like someone showed me the secret of the shaker and the tambourine. Like if you if you put a shaker quietly here or a tambourine there, it outstandingly like that's the word like makes you could feel it and you're like wow you did so much with such a small instrument but then i think from a couple songs i overdid it <laughs> <laughs> oh was it too much it was too much i was just like shaka, 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 and i go back and i'm like okay tabasco sauce is good but you don't need to put it in your milk you yeah know what I mean? <laughs> yeah like shake weights yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. So I just ran with, I think there's a couple songs where I, well, I mean, I don't know if you've had the same thing, like where you did something good and then you go in that direction and then you're like, you have to pull back, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, too much. It's like, almost like, it's almost like every record you have to kind of clean the palette, become new. I don't know. No, I know what you mean. I, I, th also, just side note, I think everybody should start a drinking game anytime I or you say too much. I know. <laughs> Drink. It's, it's, it's going to be such a problem with me because like, like even with like my kids, or I'll be like, that's too much. And my, my daughter will be like, ha, you said it. Yep. <laughs> just saying we have a song called All of It. And then I didn't realize how much we say or pe other people will say all of it. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh yeah, that's like totally normal thing to say. Like I shouldn't have written a song called All of It, but I did. Oh well. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, checklist. We have a song called Checklist, and I write checklists. Like, oh my God, yeah, I like I write checklists like every nice. single day, and and people are always like, "Dart, you said it." <laughs> <laughs> like a to do list. Yeah. Yeah. So, question: What's that song about? Metal in a microwave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. what? <laughs> That well, caught my ear right away. I love it. it well, I sometimes when I write songs, uh, you know, it has to do with stuff I like, and I like putting metal in my group. No, um, and there are certain bands that like I see over time. They're not going to get forgotten, of course, but you, you like, you worry if if people still understand this angle. You know what I mean? The Dead Milkman had this angle. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now you're talking it, my language. Keep going. Yeah, like bitch and Camaro, and you know, punk rock girl, and so it's like, so I just wanted to have a punk rock. So the Descendants obviously have their a different kind of angle, mm -hmm. but you know, but but also like it's it's punk rock without shaking a fist. You know, it's it's inviting and funny, and but at the same time, I think if you remember the movie Revenge of the Nerds two. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they at one point the nerds play a song together. The song doesn't sound anything like metal in the microwave, and I don't know why, but I kept feeling like, well, this would be a song that that band would play. Okay, <laughs> you know okay, I mean? yeah, yeah, it's like their next like, song. <laughs> like just kind of like quirky, weird punk rejects, you know, like, and, and so I don't know. It's just kind of like this patchwork of the Dead Milkmen. <laughs> Yeah. Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> I love that. I love the Dead Milkmen. I grew up listening to them. They early on, like right when MXPX was starting, that's I was listening to them and like Bad Religion, you know, like and Green Day, you know. So yeah, ton big lizard, big lizard in my backyard is one of my favorite records. Right. Yeah. Um, yep. Obviously, Bitch and Camaro is amazing and Punk Rock Girl. Uh, but um, I'm trying to think of some other songs. Swordfish. It was an instrumental song. And we, from, the dead, from the dead milkman, it's called swordfish. Yeah, yeah. It's on that album on big lizard in my okay. backyard. And, um, we covered it. We covered the song and it's like this weird, like boom, boom, wee. It's like this real slidey bass, funky thing. And to me, it was like, 
I didn't think it was like punk. I thought it was punk rock, but just like a weird style of punk rock. Like I didn't realize how different they were because I just didn't know much about punk yet. I was still new, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I love that stuff, man. Yeah, like like nobody really picked up, like grabbed whatever it's called. But the, the, no one took that instrumental and was like, I'm going to expand. Yeah. And really bring the, you know, like, Yeah, but songs like um, Tiny Town. This is a tiny okay. town, and oh, we don't crazy. want you coming around. It's like about rednecks, you know, being being racist and jerks. Even but, the violent fans, you know what I mean? Like, just they were punk. Yeah, that was you know, to be but, honest. That was another band that I. That's how I learned to play bass. Was I learned a bunch of violent femmes bass lines, and that's why I have like that twelve bar blues style that I do. Oh, he's so good. And I have a. It's not really a question. It's, it's a question statement because. You know, I just don't understand as a non like bass player guitar. Like I play guitar, but you know, I'm not you know a guitar player. Is there every guitar player has an acoustic guitar pretty much? I can't believe how many bass players don't have acoustic basses. I just would have thought. I, w- I just would have thought, but you, it's not a very popular. You would have thought. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thing to think about. I have at least two or three. Oh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> so, you are awesome. <laughs> yes, I love it. But it took a while to get one. You know, we started doing bass or acoustic stuff, and I would get one for that. But yeah. um, I use a Takamini. Cool. But uh, why? I don't know. I mean, you know, Violent Femmes, for those that don't know, they all played acoustic instruments, yeah. all of them. Yeah. So even the bass player, and he did all those rocking bass lines and solos all with that acoustic bass. And blanking around in a good way. Yeah, like you it could sounds so cool. Oh, yeah. Him digging into his acoustic bass is the best. I got to say, please, please, please do not go. That's the name of the song by the uh, Violet Femmes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And, and it's slow oh. and walking, and there's a bass solo in there. But it's just, for me, maybe that, that influenced me even more than I realized because I write a lot of weird songs like that, you know? Yeah. And the singer, I... He's his ple- his voice is always so pleading. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Ugh. Gordon Gano, Brian yeah. Rich- Brian Ritchie is the name of the the bass player. I'm pretty sure bass if player. I have that correctly. Wow. But Gordon Gano, uh, funny story about Violent Films. We were playing in San Francisco with them, a radio show, and Ooh, that's awesome. it was Social Distortion, MXPX, uh, Violent Films. I think Rise Against might have been there as well. But anyway, is- we're yeah. all huge fans. But Yuri was a you know, Yuri was like, I really want to meet them. And he, he told like our, our A&R guy, or it was some like our tour manager or somebody. He's like, yeah. let, me, let me see what I can do. And so they went and talked to their, their people. And they're like, yeah, tell them to come over. And so Yuri walks, <laughs> walks into the Violent Femmes dressing room. And like, I don't think anybody knew who he was or he was even coming in there. So like everybody just was like ignoring him the whole <laughs> time. And then, <laughs> he's just like, Yuri's just like, all right, uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> and just left like it's uh, fine we're uh, still fans we don't they can do they can call us assholes and we'll still love them yeah, but yeah. uh that's kind of their their thing but, i feel like i feel like that would be a violent femmes like they're so punk rock that they're punking they're punking it up right there <laughs> yeah 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 well this was like i don't know this had to be 15 years or more this is a long yeah. time ago but back way before cell phones had cameras to be honest i think it was even before that can you even remember that? I can't. I, I was just lucky enough to see him play twice, and, and they're just they're just great. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 fun, kind of, you know, just a lot of sometimes, like you're saying, with metal in the microwave. Just there was, well, it also had to do with the fact that you know, the politics in America, and America is just is just so. Every, everything is so crazy right now that in the in the realm of punk rock, you know, let's let's you know, like people think about it and all the different kind of like spikes to the porcupine. It it's almost like if you com- if if you moaned or made points about the current state of America, I think your voice, even though it's valiant to do, and I've done it. It almost just falls under another person moaning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a Facebook comment or a, 
an, an internet argument. Like, it, is is the message being heard, or is everyone screaming so loud that the, the punk rock screamers scream is just melted into it? Do you know what I mean? So, as someone who likes to play aggressive music a, alongside ska, ska and dub reggae, I had to go like, well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to scream at someone something that makes them have to go like. Well, I mean, did you read that article? I mean, I, clearly you didn't read that article in the New York Post and the Washington because if you did, then you'd realize that. I didn't, well, you know what I mean? So metal and microwave was, in songs like that, like Dead Bottle, um, th- they're good ways to to play the energy and have a good time, like the bands we were talking about, without having to like make someone go through something that maybe they're listening to music to not go through. You know what I mean? Like, that's very that's a very real thing right now in, in our present situation is like do we want to add to the whining and the complaining and the, the sort of just negative energy that's seemingly just overwhelming everyone at this point in the world but punk rock really has i think almost unconsciously taken a turn towards the positive uh i certainly have in the last few few things that we've you know been writing or whatever but I think it's probably probably just a collective need for more positivity in the world. And yeah, we all know that there's a lot of shit and there's a lot going down that is seemingly uh, a lot of lies, a lot of not sure who's telling the truth, who to believe. And what you were talking about with the articles and like having to like, did, I, did you do your research? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're all afraid to say something because next week it's going to be proved wrong. So you don't want to necessarily take a real hard stance on on an actual issue because the issues constantly are, are moving and the goalposts are moving. And yeah, it's a hard position to be in as a songwriter. So you have to be a little bit more vague sometimes. But um, I think positivity that you can never go wrong with positivity. And, and I think the way punk rock people do it, like such as yourself, is you add in the realness of life you add in the reality mm. like this got, went wrong and this went wrong but this is going right so let's focus on and make our energy towards that yeah and and you know and you can do it in different ways like i found it really interesting I, for the too much video i have this shirt that i spray painted the word no on right i like to because because i you know i told you i'm not very good at mm-hmm. like drawing or anything i i tend to like to spray paint things because i can get into the paint even though i'm not like yeah doing the lisa um uh and people have been asking me about that shirt and and it's kind of it's kind of a punk rock thing i don't know and i i made that shirt because i started noticing my inner monologue like i'd wake up and i'd go you know turn the tv on and they'd be like do you have severe to chronic um ac- acne and i'd be like mm, no and then the next commercial would be like do you want to try the Baconator slop machine? I'd be like, oh, uh, no. And then I changed the channel, and they'd be like, "There's the kids are still in the cages on the border. And I would think to myself, I wonder if anyone's going to do anything about that. And I'd be like, no. And then something at that time, like the, 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 the Trump would say something that was pretty out, outlandish, and I'd be like, I wonder if, I wonder if anything's going to change because of that. And I'd be like, nope. And then you see, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's Madam, you know, and I wonder if that's gonna, nope. And so I just started, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not negative, it's not pessimism, it's just realizing that you're going around going, <sighs> nope. Nope. You know? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> like, is anything gonna change? Is anyone gonna be good? Like, so it's like, I can sing a fun song and, and still eternally be, I don't know, think, think the punk rock message you yeah know what i mean yeah no that's so great i mean yeah. it's cool to do stuff like that because now you have a story to tell like no 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 or you know it's a real story so it makes sense but that actually yeah. reminds me of totally unrelated to no but more related to stencils on a t-shirt <laughs> yeah yeah mxpx was doing a tour uh european tour we arrived in vienna austria and uh the, the all our merch was delayed so we're like, oh, crap, like, what do we do? <laughs> and so we went and bought, like, a bunch of cheap T-shirts and spray paint and made a stencil and literally yeah. just made MXPX shirts on a stencil and sold them that night. Pretty, I mean, yeah, we I didn't sell them for, like, full price maybe, but. 
<laughs> I bet yeah, a I week think. a week later it was, those shirts were a mess, just like. Oh, right, 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 right. The first rain. It's a disposable <laughs> yeah. T-shirt, disposable concert tee. Yeah. <laughs> but but no no I I love I I bet the the, the MXPS listeners and fans love. It. Still yeah, I mean, do what you got to do. I guess that's that's the punk rock way. Like, yeah. figure it out. And and those years, we were often doing everything on our own. Oh it was, yeah, uh, it was fun though. I mean, good memories, good good vibes. So, are you guys touring? You guys going to tour on the new record? We got one show that's like bookety booked, booked, booked because it was booked before COVID lockdown, and that's October twenty third, which is our annual Halloween show slash. It's going to be our record release. Awesome. So. Thank God. Um, but we do have two runs, uh, one in April and one in May. But we hope we hope it happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is easily the longest I have not played live ever since I was 16 or 17 or whatever. Like, it, yeah, I, can, I cannot believe it has not happened a, over a year and a half. I don't even know. Has it been two years? I mean, it's crazy. This has definitely been the longest for me, too. Lot for live oh. shows. Technically, I yeah. guess we played live on the internet, but it's a little different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, which is totally different. Yeah. Like so, thinking yeah. about, like thinking about being backstage and going, "All right, I'm going to go on stage now." Is a crazy idea now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's so. I if I was going to predict, I would say that they'll probably happen because I'm, shows are happening now, and yeah, the yeah. Delta variant is way worse than it was last year than regular COVID last year. Um, I know Waco numbers of my wife tells me she's like Waco's record high right now, like higher than ever in Waco. And then here in Bremerton, it's, I don't know if it's higher than ever, but it's still bad. So it's weird. It's weird. And I don't feel it because I'm just like, I'm here doing a podcast with you talking yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, we have band practice and we, you know, I go home and hang out with the kids. I go to the gym. I work out. You know, masks exist. Sometimes I wear a mask when I'm going inside places. But if I'm in my house, I don't have to wear a mask. So right. things are good uh, on that front. So it, it is weird to think, like, are they going to shut down again next year? I think you're good. I think, I, think, um, I think we need to figure out how to learn to live with this and how to be safe and still go about our business and do shows and... I mean, the shows are really the hardest thing because there's so many people, right? Um, yeah. But I think it's happening, and uh, I think I think as the time goes, we'll just we adapt as people, as humans, we adapt, and we'll we'll figure it out. And I think it just takes us Americans longer because we don't have much guidance, kind of on our own, <laughs> which is I fine. I don't mind being on my own. I just I don't want people to tell me that I'm not on my own and then not do anything about it. I think like that, you're saying, no. I gotta tell no. you though, this, I this whole crazy COVID thing. I think that's the best I've heard it put. It's got guidance. Yeah, if we could just have a little guidance, because guidance isn't a mandate or a rule. It's guidance, mm -hmm. you know. And and yeah, I think that's the best I've heard it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> if they could just somehow implement that. But yeah, I mean, I think the next uh, the Halloween show, like it's pretty much two months away, and I'm already got the butterflies. Where's that going to be? You might as well tell At everybody. Brighton Bright Music Hall in Alston, Mass, which is basically Boston. Awesome. Um, with great bands, I got to bring them up. Um, be like Max, Cat Bite, and Kill Lincoln. They're just three of the, you, uh, you know, they're you know they've been around but like newer ska bands if you yep, will yep um keep flying um is not on the bill but we're going to be playing more shows with them but they're included in that great that great gaggle um but it's just a with those bands and having a new record and not playing in over a year and a half or so i mean this it's a supercharged show you yeah. know it's like you can just feel it you know like like it's it's on <laughs> yes Dude, I can feel it for all the way from here. Dude, thank you. I'm excited to be playing with those guys. All right. I mean, I think uh, I think you got a good record on your hands. I think people are going to be excited. If they've seen the video, I know they're excited. The video's great. Uh, you know, too much. Like you said, check out the no shirt you're wearing. <laughs> but uh, 
It's good, man. I, I just, I think, I think it's a record people are going to put on and they'll just keep putting it on and you can dance to it. You can throw it on in the car. It's got yeah. so much energy. It's great. So big D in the kids Thanks. table, do your art coming out uh, on side one dummy, our old label, yeah. one of our old labels. Um, yes. But yeah, Joe and Joe and Bill are great. Yep, Thomas. And I appreciate you saying that coming from you. So Thomas always, as well. So yes, Thomas is the but, third. Right. Yep, Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Thomas? Our, 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 our French buddy. Yep, yep. Well, <laughs> is there anything else you want to let people know about besides just obviously the new album coming out October 24th? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is we have, like you mentioned at the beginning, we have a, a video coming out uh, that is a collective of people doing their art. And it's super awesome I've, I've 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 tried to not watch any of the clips because i want to be really surprised i've never done this i've never not watched an edit of a video before it comes out I've, a couple of my personal high school and college friends sent me their things that i've seen and they're all really good i mean it's it's it like not to do the comic book it's like seeing you know like a compilation of all all the different Marvel characters and DC characters just doing their powers. Do you know what I mean? You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. So that's super exciting. Um, but then the best thing in the world is um, on the new record, we did a, we did a, a song, split song with the band Melt Banana, noise core band from um, Japan. And we did a video. I won't say too much about it because it's a surprise. We did a video with them. And so it's for, it's for a song called You Buggin'. And, uh, and it's it's just gonna be a trip. <laughs> it sounds like a trip already. <laughs> Milk banana, you bugging. <laughs> yeah. Right on, Dave. Dave, yeah. thank you so much for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Thanks, Dave McWayne, Everybody. Man.